Okay, ladies, welcome to the Shred the Christmas Spread. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lisa Jowett. And I just thought I'd just share a little bit about why I actually became a personal trainer. I went through a really messy divorce about 10 years ago. And what got me through the high anxiety and stress was actually exercising again. I'd always been a really fit and healthy kid. But once I had my kids, I actually sort of like put that to the back burner for like a number of years. Um, and I actually worked, used to work in publishing. Um, so it was a very sedentary type of job sitting there at a desk all day. Um, but once I went through my divorce um, and I was going through that awful anxiety, I was like, all right, I need to like get back into my health and fitness. So I started jogging and started going back to the gym again um, and really put my focus into my health and fitness. And before I knew it, I was basically giving advice to um, everyone that I worked with. And I decided uh, probably nine years ago that I would actually change careers. So I studied PT and about seven years ago, I actually took the leap and um, started to actually do some training. First of all, worked for a friend doing some boot camp. Then I worked for a big gym called Virgin in at Moore Park in Sydney. And about two and a half years ago, I started my own business. And my whole life and my passion is to be able to help people um, not only lose weight, but it's, you know, it's about feeling good at the end of the day. So it's not just weight loss, it's, it's um, building muscle, weight loss, having energy. Um, but today I I'm here to help you um, and just help you because I know that a lot of people over the Christmas time, you've put on maybe a little bit of weight, you're not quite feeling as comfortable as in your clothes as what you normally would. Um, and also I think like for well, at least anyone that's in Sydney, um, we sort of had a lot of celebrations, I think at the end of last year, because we had all came out of lockdown. So there was like all these parties and celebrations. Everyone wanted to catch up then. Then we went straight into like the Christmas festive season. So it's just been like, a, I think, a lot of celebrating. And I basically today am just going to share some tips and tricks and just the reasons why this can be very helpful for weight loss and to, you know, like I mentioned before, gain more energy. So I'm just going to share my screen. And just let me know. Someone can let me know if they can see it. Just give me one second. It's always a bit slow. Okay. Everyone see my screen okay? Yeah, awesome. Okay. So shred the, shred the Christmas spread. I thought that was a bit of fun. So how to drop the festive kilos season, um, festive season kilos quickly. So the number one thing um, is resistance training, okay? So this is what's going to help us drop, like build some muscle um, because essentially after the age of like 30, our metabolic rate starts to drop. So if we're not building muscle, um, it means that our metabolic rate actually drops even more. So weightlifting has been a practice for like centuries, um, but it doesn't matter what type of resistance training you do. It doesn't matter if it's like done with body weight, um, resistance bands, dumbbells, barbells, kettlebells, anything where we're using a bit of force and resistance to make our muscles work. Um, and this is essentially what we all need, ladies. I think we've got all ladies here. Um, so whilst, you know, many exercises such as, you know, running and cycling um, are very effective for reducing body fat, um, these activities can also lead to decrease um, muscle size, leading to weaker muscles um, and greater perceived weight loss um, but just because muscle is denser than fat. But unlike endurance exercises, um, evidence shows resistance training not only has beneficial um, effects on reducing fat, but it also increases the muscle size and strength. Now, we want the muscle size to increase. So a lot of people and a lot of ladies always get worried about doing weights. Is it going to make you bulky? 
weights is not what makes you bulky. It's eating lots of food is the thing that makes you bulky. So with doing weights, we actually end up experience, experiencing what we call the afterburn. I'm sure most of you have heard of that. Um, so this is the energy that comes from our muscles. Um, so, so the energy, sorry, that comes from our muscles, it has the ability to break down fat and carbohydrates stored within the muscle, liver and fat tissues um, with the help of oxygen. So during exercise, essentially, we just breathe faster and our heart works harder to pump more oxygen, fat and carbohydrates to our existing muscles. So what's less obvious, however, is that after we've finished exercising, um, oxygen uptake actually remains elevated in order to restore the muscles to their re resting state by breaking down the stored fat and carbohydrates. So this is like, you know, this, this is why it's so important to include some sort of like resistance training. Um, this phenomenon is actually called the post-exercise oxygen consumption also, but it's essentially just the afterburn effect. Um, so it describes how long oxygen uptake remains elevated after exercise in order to help the muscles recover. Now, another form of training that I really am a strong believer in is HIIT training. So that's high intensity interval training. So we, you can actually burn a lot of calories in quite a short amount of time in a HIIT session. Um, so HIIT sessions, there's a multitude of benefits, okay? So including lean body mass, um, improved insulin sensitive, sensitivity, improved mitochondrial function. So mitochondria are actually um, the powerhouse cells. They help turn the energy we take from food into the cell that we can then use. So HIIT works. HIIT workouts are designed to really push you to your limits um, and get you out of your comfort zone, but just for a short period of time. So when in setting up HIIT workouts, um, your focus should be on four important things. So duration, um, intensity, frequency, and the length of recovery and interval. So how long you rest between intervals depends on how experienced you are um, and what what fitness level you're at so an advanced trainer might want to challenge themselves and they want to might want to do a two to one ratio so that would mean that they would be working so training for like two minutes and then only resting for one minute um, whereas someone that's maybe not as advanced might do it the other way around so they might actually work for one minute and then have a two minute rest another um form of hit is Tabata. Tabata. I love a bit of Tabata. Tabata is only four minutes. Now, when you say only four minutes, once you actually do a Tabata, you'll be like, oh my God, this is actually very challenging because it's 20 seconds of work and 10 seconds rest. So this is actually the advanced type of training still because it's because you're not getting that rest. And generally I would actually do a Tabata and then have like a little bit of a break and then go on to another Tabata. So it, trust me, it gets the heart rate up. And this all really helps you burn more fat. Um, yeah, so in conclusion, we, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, though, like we want to be including movement every day. So a bit of a combination of our resistance and our hit on the days that we're not doing that sort of training, we want to be doing 10,000 steps or cycling or swimming um, we just want to be moving because essentially we, for humans are, are meant to move. We're not meant to be sitting down sedentary all day, every day, like sitting at a computer for eight hours. So even if you can break up your day and actually, you know, go for a 10 minute walk, um, cause I know that a lot of you are super, super busy and you're like, Oh, I just don't have the time. But, you know, I mean, it's even like, having the having some boundaries within your work as well and just going I'm going to go for a 15 minute walk so you may not be able to do it all in one hit and this is actually why hit training is good as well because you can do like a 15 minute hit session so it's not like you need to have all the time in the world you don't need to be doing like a one hour session and all of this sort of stuff can be done I mean you can just do body weight training as well so um, and a lot of us are at home at the moment as well so it's not like we need to even have to worry about showers. We can train and then sit in our stench <laughs> for a bit. Um, now, the next thing, which is super important, 
is um, eating whole foods. That's gone out of order. So nutrition is one of my favorite topics, but I can totally understand why people get confused because um, there's like a new fad diet, like, you know, every three minutes essentially. Um, and whilst it's true that all weight loss and weight gain just comes down to calories in versus calories out, um, but after the age of 35, it definitely gets a little more challenging. Um, we can't get away with everything that we did when we were younger. Um, and high fructose foods really do play an effect, especially once you're over the age of 35. Um, this is when we can start to hit that perimenopausal age and we are much more sensitive to the high fructose. Um, but, you know, there's many arguments on what's the best diet, but all communities, um, well, the majority, except for the carnivore one, will always, be, you know, will essentially say having a diet full of whole food, foods like fresh fruit, fresh veggies, minimizing your processed foods is superior for overall wellness. Um, however, there is quite a lot of research stating that low carb and intermittent fasting can be very helpful. Um, intermittent fasting, I started dabbling with that um, quite a number of years ago. I'll go back to that. My slides are out of order, but it's okay. Because um, there's a lot of, it can be very beneficial when you're trying to lose some weight because essentially a lot of the time people don't actually know how much food they're eating and they might start first thing in the morning and they're just sort of like grazing all day. And unless you have someone guiding you, um, this is when it can, you're just eating too many calories. Um, and there is quite a lot of evidence that time restricted eating can be super beneficial. There's some very popular, popular versions. I'm sure most of you have heard of um, a few of them. Um, and they're literally just written as fasting hours and feeding hours. So example, like a 1410 would indicate that you're um, fasting for 14 hours and you're just eating within 10 hours. Um, a 1212, the main advantage of a 1212, this is like a good little starter. It can like help, like if you are new to intermittent fasting, um, but it's essentially so also like, our, like it's not just good for weight loss. This is just good for overall health because it gives our bodies time to actually repair our cells instead of always trying to um, process our food. Another one which is quite popular um, at the moment is a 16-8. So this is where you're eating for um, only eight hours. So you'd, you, know, you might start at like 11 a.m. and finish at 7 p.m. Um, or else there's other ones which are weekly ones where people actually do more like they might actually um, fast for like four days or sorry, eat for four days, fast for three days. So there's lots of different types. The, and there's also the 5-2. So this is a little bit different because there's no, they just have two days a week where there's low calories. So you might have 500 calories and it, in theory, Michael Mosley talks about that then you can sort of eat what you want on those other five days. But I always say within reason because at the end of the day, it still comes to how many calories you're eating over a week. But this can be a very helpful way to help you lose weight um, along with like many other like health benefits. Um, um, so, yeah, so there's many like I said, there's like many different styles um, and so many more than what I just mentioned, but you probably get a good understanding of what I'm talking about. I actually um, quite like doing, I pretty much eat like a, the 16, eight because I'm super busy in the mornings. I'm training people. So by the time I get to eat, it's usually like 11 o'clock. So um, I find it quite helpful. You can have water and black coffee and tea, but you can't have like milk or anything like that because then that actually ruins the fast. Um, another one which can be super helpful for dropping some kilos um, is a low carb diet. Um, I'm not saying keto, but just low carb. Um, 
there's and there's quite a lot of benefits so low carb diets reduce your appetite so hunger tends to be like the worst side effect for when people are dieting and studies consistently show that when people cut carbs and eat more protein and fat they actually end up eating a lot less calories um, and low carb diets lead to more weight loss at first this is because essentially low carb diets act to rid any excess water so from your body so it actually helps lower the insulin levels leading to rapid weight loss in the first week or two okay so you need to it's not all weight so you will it is actually water retention but you will psychologically though it's a really good kickstart because it can then be like all right i've lost a couple of kilos and then it also puts you in that right mindset. You're already starting to feel better because it will help you with your bloating. Um, and your mind will already be going, okay, this is all feeling good. And then you're more likely to continue on. Because if you don't see results, like a lot of this problem is, I mean, results take time, right? But we can fast track those results with these little tricks. And it just helps, like I said, mentally. Um, so a lot of um, the thing is another thing that can be very helpful with a low carb diet is the fact that a lot of the um, fat actually comes from the abdominal cavity. Now this, because not all fat in the body is the same. Okay. So where fat is stored determines how it affects your health and risk of disease. So low carb diets are very effective at reducing the harmful abdominal fat. Um, it also triglycerides tend to drop drastically. Um, so these are fat molecules that circulate in your bloodstream. So all of this stuff, all of the, this fat, we want it to go. Um, you'll have an increased levels of good HDL. So that's your good cholesterol. Um, the higher your levels of HDL relative to bad LDL, the lower your risk of heart disease. So this is another huge benefit. Um, reduce blood sugar and insulin levels. So low carb, low carb diets can be particularly helpful um, for people with diabetes and insulin resistance, um, which you know affects millions of people worldwide, especially now. And studies have proven that um, cutting carbs lowers both blood sugar and insulin levels drastically. And these can actually be super helpful for the perimenopausal women because once we hit around that 35, it could be anywhere from that 35 to 45, um, we can end up with insulin resistance. Um, and this is actually the reason why we end up with the bigger tummies because of the insulin resistance. Um, also low carb diets can help with lowering blood pressure because lower um, elevated blood pressure or hypertension um, increases you know, the risk of many diseases, including heart attacks, you know, stroke, kidney failure. So many reasons to um, get that low, get that blood pressure low. Um, it also helps um, with metabolic syndrome um, associated with the risk of diabetes and heart disease. And it also improves your bad cholesterol. People who've um, had high or bad cholesterol are more likely to have heart attacks. So However, the size of the particles is actually very important. Smaller particles are linked to a higher risk of heart disease, while larger particles are linked to a lower risk. And it turns out that low carb diets increase the size of the bad LDL um, while reducing the number of the total LDL particles in your bloodstream. Um, it's also been known to um, help um, with um, several brain disorders because your brain needs glucose as some parts of it can only burn this type of sugar. That's why your liver actually produces glucose um, from protein if you don't eat any carbs. Um, and yet a large part of your brain can also burn ketones, which are formed during starvation or when carb intake is very low, which I think is very interesting. Um, now, I generally recommend if you're going to go a low carb diet, do it more during the day. This is probably going to sound quite conflicting to what you've normally heard, um, but we want to have a nourishing dinner and actually have some carbs in the night. Now, the reason why is um, you need them for satiety. 
and and many other jobs. Now you could have things like fish and rice, um, any sort of like any sort of like protein with um, sweet potato or pumpkin, but most importantly, you just want to have all three macronutrients. So you want to have your protein, fat, and your carbs. Um, and for example, so protein supports muscles and signals circadian rhythm. So circadian rhythm is what helps you go to sleep. Okay, so this is all really important. Again, this is another thing for the you know the over thirty fives um, that we need to start thinking about this because. With the perimenopause, it can your sleep can be sleep patterns can be really interfered when you're going through that stage, and have making sure that you're eating well, and having some carbs in the nighttime is going to be super beneficial, um, and also so it's also good to have some fat. So fat delivers fat soluble nutrients, um, and then we finally need to have the starch or the um, or the carbs or our intestinal bacteria also activates thyroid hormones and promotes like our relaxation and sleep. So eating carbs at night is not going to make you fat, but eating sugar will. Okay. So high dose fructose, so dates, agave, honey, these all cause insulin resistance. So try to avoid desserts as best as you can. So that even includes like not having, like you shouldn't really have really sweet fruits before bed either. Have it, have it actually a bit earlier in the day. Um, And, or, but even go preferably have berries, especially if you're trying to lose weight, like don't really go your bananas and what have you just while you're trying to lose weight. Um, You can have like a little bit of chocolate, chocolate, like the 85% cocoa, there's only about 1.3 grams of fructose in there. So that's like quite low. Um, so yeah, so as far as um, eating is concerned, having trying some intermittent fasting and going low carb, you can lose like a few kilos quite quickly. Now, restorative sleep. Now, sleep is so important and it amazes me at how many people don't get a lot of it. And it actually, um, there's just so many negative effects associated with not getting enough sleep. Um, I've listed just 10 with long, like with long-term sleep deprivation, but there's so many more. So weight gain and obesity, this is when you're not getting enough sleep, it actually causes, um, causes hormones to react and it causes a hormone called ghrelin um to actually which means that you're hungry and you're going to actually go for all your sweet salty stuff so this is because of a hormone because you're not having enough sleep um diabetes hypertension depression and anxiety um, memory loss and lack of focus early onset dementia um, heart attack and stroke immune system deficiency decreased fertility and low sex drive. So these are just a couple of things. And look, I'm sure that most of you have felt the effects um, from, you know, one or two nights sleep deprivation. You know, you lack focus, motivation, you feel grumpy um, and you do, you just want to snack on like junk food um, and you're, you're just looking for that food to satisfy you and to basically sort of like reward you because you're like feeling exhausted. Um, But imagine, so imagine what's going on um, if this is a regular occurrence. So we really need to focus on trying to get like about seven to nine hours sleep. You can make up your sleep as well. So if you have like a bad night's sleep and you can then like have like a 20 minute power nap or something that can be really helpful. Some people will also like sleep a bit less during the week and you can make it up on the weekend. Um, But like I said, it's really important to make sure that you are getting your sleep every night. It's so, it's, yeah, it's so important. And it's, so the, not only will you go for the junk food, there's another hormone which actually does stop you from um, losing the weight. So get your get your good night's sleep and i really recommend 
if you are having problems um, to have like a good sleep routine and it's just real basic stuff. You probably know a lot of it. Um, so just going to sleep and waking up at the same time. So essentially we, we, we're meant to go to sleep not long after the sun sets and then we're supposed to be getting up when the sun rises. So this is always going to be the best time to sleep. Um, obviously keep have a dark, um, cool room. If your room's too hot, you'll find that you're sweating in the night. It's not very comfortable. Um, and be mindful of what you drink and eat. Obviously, caffeine is not great. And alcohol is even probably worse. Um, if you drink too much alcohol, you're not even sleeping. You're actually unconscious. And so you're not, you're not actually sleeping at all. Um, it's a really poor, well, it's a real poor sort of sleep. So it's super important to be very, to keep your alcohol low. Um, even start like a evening ritual. So you could have like a bath, read a book, listen to some calm music uh, or just anything that you essentially find relaxing. Um, and, but just keep it simple. It doesn't have to be some long drawn out process, but just, just find something that relaxes you. There's no wrong or right when it comes to relaxation. Um, I think everyone knows this one, but avoid screen time an hour before you go to sleep. I think we're all a bit guilty of like getting on the phone too late. So really try to avoid that for at least an hour before you go to bed. Um, and like I mentioned before, just avoid caffeine after midday. So another one which I think most of us, um, you know, we encounter stress with our, whether we're with our jobs or with our kids um, or whatever's going on, we all have stresses in our lives and it's super important to try to manage um, those stresses um, and trying to find a way to help you. Um, and stress management is all about basically taking charge of your lifestyle. So through thoughts, emotions, and the way you deal with problems. So no matter how stressful your life seems, there are steps you can take to at least relieve it, um, relieve the pressure and, and gain some sort of control. Now, obviously, if you keep doing all these things and you've got like there's some sort of issue, big issue, then you have to address that issue. But um I personally recommend meditation. A lot of people are like, no, I'm too wide, you know, I feel too wide to be able to do that. And I totally get that as well. Um, and I even recommend like going for natural walk, like walks in nature, even doing a bit more like a meditation when you go for a walk. So instead of going for a walk and listening to music, I actually sometimes when I'm feeling stressed, I'll actually go for a walk but I'll start my walk by being grateful. So I actually look at what's around me. I think about my life. I think about what I'm grateful for. And then I start sort of like enjoying like nature and everything that nature has to offer. And I find that's a really sort of good way for me to just stress because getting out in nature, there's like, you know, I think most of us would agree that um, it helps you relax. Um, but I do have to say, if you do want to try meditating, it's the sort of thing that you, you need to practice. It's not a, an easy one. And I used to think, oh, that's just so boring. But actually, it does. Um, there's a huge amount of benefits. Like it helps me um, like with creativity, definitely helps me with energy. So after I've meditated, I generally feel like I'm much more energized. I sleep better because you need to be doing your meditation in the day, not like when you're trying to go to sleep. Um, I mean, you can do it then as well, but you want to do it at some point in the day, even if it's for five minutes. Um, there's just like a sense of calm. You just have, I find that I had like more of a positive outlook um, and it just, you know, it just creates like a more self-awareness, you know, increased focus and just uh, spiritual growth. And I think it just being, there's a lot of studies and even I know with certain clients that I've trained when they're very stressed out, it's really hard for them to drop the weight. So there's, there are quite a lot of factors that come into dropping weight. So it is super important to try to have all these pillars aligned. Um, now, 
positive mindset. So this is super, super important. Um, you know, believing in yourself is the first step. Okay. So, um, you know, if you think, if you can think it um, and believe in yourself, like anything is possible. So my top 10 tips for believing in yourself. Um, one is just be more conscious of your choices. So really, you know, make sure that they're conscious decisions. They're not just decisions that you're just making on a whim. Um, identify any of your limiting beliefs. So don't, you know, I did a, um, a live the other day just talking about focusing on what you want rather than what you don't want. Okay, so, you know, for like a limiting belief would be, say, um, or transforming a limiting belief would be, I'm incapable of reaching my health goals because I've failed at reaching these goals before. To I'm capable of reaching my health goals because I've learned the skills I need to keep myself on track in the future. So it really is about focusing on what you want rather than um, what you don't want because you basically put it out to the universe that you're, and that's what you're going to start thinking about. If you're thinking about ne the negativity, then that's what you're going to focus on rather than the positive. So I always focus on the, po focus on the positives. Um, set SMART goals. So we all know what SMART goals are, uh, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This is super important for you to be able to help you drop your weight or add, your, add muscle or increase your fitness. Um, this, yeah, it needs to be measurable. So engage, so engage in like all new activities with a positive attitude. So instead of just thinking like, oh God, I've got to exercise today, you know, even like be grateful that you actually have a body that's able to do that. Because I'm telling you what, if, if you get to a point where you can't do it, you're going to be like, going, God, I wish I could exercise. If you ended up in a wheelchair or something like that. Um, I know it sounds a bit morbid, but it really, it's really, I think we all need to be a little bit more grateful with our grateful for our bodies and what we're able to do with our bodies um, and why, while we're young enough to do so. So, um, you know, get comfortable with being uncomfortable to see, you know, if we're going to be success in anything can be a challenge. So, and you're going to have days where you don't want to do it. And it's just literally about pushing through and getting it done. And then look at, you don't have to be perfect, but it's about trying to progress as you go along. Um, and, and it's progression over perfection. So even if, you know, you have a bad day, just leave that for yesterday. Don't go, oh, okay, I'm going to start next week. Start the next day, like, um, or start if you've, even had a binge lunch or something like that go oh, no all right I'm not gonna I'm gonna go light for dinner so but more importantly though just don't beat yourself up like talk to yourself kindly be positive about yourself and accept that you'll make mistakes we all make mistakes you know like I said it's it's um, progression not perfection and if it's consistency if you keep on being consistent and and doing the right thing the majority of the time, you're going to end up getting results. Um, so, yeah, so keep moving forward and, and just keep an open mind. Um, but essentially, if we have all these pillars in place, this is what's going to help us be able to drop those kilos quickly. And now I've got some very exciting news to announce. Um, I'm actually going to be running a free 21 day get lean challenge. Um, so there's going to be um, recipes, there's going to be workouts, um, there's going to be daily motivation, there's going to be prizes. Um, and it's just going to be 21 days just to help people um, get back on track and kickstart their new year. Um, so I will be reaching out to everyone and offering them this free challenge, um, which I'm super excited. I'm going to be starting that on the Monday, the 7th of February, 
I will, the way I'm going to run it though, is I'll be doing um, a get together either on the Friday or the Saturday because I want to help everyone set up. So it will be a meeting about what sort of food you need to get and what have you. Um, so I'm super excited to um, be able to invite everyone to that. And um, yeah, so it's, yeah, so invite all your friends. Um, and yeah, I think this will be, this is going to be super exciting. And I'd just like to thank everyone so much for giving up your valuable time um, and attending my webinar. Now, if anyone has any questions, um, just put it into the chat um, and I'll answer any of those. Just, I'm just going to stop sharing. Um, okay. Does anyone have any questions? No. Okay. All right, no worries, girls. Have a wonderful evening. And like I said, thank you very much. I will be reaching out to everyone um, about my free challenge. So have a wonderful night and I will chat to you soon. Bye.